Hello, my name is Mar Pimentel. I'm one of the CAM application specialists here at Hawker Systems. And in this video, we'll be talking about what is CAMWorks assembly mode. So to understand what assembly mode is all about, let's first talk about the standard, more commonly used functionality inside CAMWorks of part mode. Technically, you work in part mode as soon as you open up your SOLIDWORKS part within CAMWorks and you program the part. So if we're looking at part mode right here, we can see that I've already programmed operations on side one and side two of the part. There's a facing operation on the back side. The same workflow, the automatic feature recognition, the intelligence-based machining, all this stuff that we usually talk about applies both in part mode and assembly mode. So what we'll do in this video is talk about the differences between the two modes and kind of why you would choose one over the other depending on what it is you're trying to achieve. But to understand what assembly mode is all about, let's first take a look at what SOLIDWORKS parts and assemblies are all about. If I click on File, New, we can see the usual breakdown you get whenever you try and open up or create a new part file within SOLIDWORKS. Part files are the actual solids we're looking at when we're manipulating things in design. So these are the actual design files that we create. In assembly mode, it's actually a collection of different solids together in one file. So assembly mode is really just multiple solids mated together or given those relationships between them to lock them into place. So that is what SOLIDWORKS assemblies are all about. Where CAMWORKS comes in is the idea that we can still program off of individual part files, but in assembly mode, we can add other solids, make them together, give those relationships, and we have something a little more representative of what happens on the machine. So for instance, let's go into assembly mode by basically opening up a SOLIDWORKS assembly. So you can see here I have on screen the same part file. I have two instances of that part file, one for side one and one for side two. I have stocks designed and added to this model as well. And then I have my Kurt Vices and my table. So the purpose of assembly mode, at least at the beginning, is to allow you to model up everything that you would see on the machine. This allows you extra gauge checking capabilities, uh, ways to check to make sure that you are programming the part correctly, and that you have access to the various features on the part depending on how you're, you're holding this in here. So in this case, I want to make sure that I have access to side one, side two by setting them up twice. Another reason to use assembly mode is now that we have multiple parts on screen, we can program for multiple parts. We can do a higher level of production by adding more parts to the table and incorporating that into our programming. So instead of doing a tool change between parts, we can actually share the tool across the different sides of the part, the different parts on screen as well, because it doesn't just have to be one part, it could be multiple different parts that you're setting up on a table. So assembly mode at the beginning is really just a collection of solids, the solids you're looking to machine, the solids you're looking to use to define your stock, and then solids that represent anything you want to make sure you don't want to gouge against. But the overall workflow, the way to use assembly mode, is also something that, uh, that's a little different as well. If we take a look at my CAMWorks feature tree, the interface is slightly different. It works exactly the same way though. The only difference is first, because we have multiple solids on screen, CAMWorks really doesn't know which one is the actual part file. So we'll go to our part manager and it's asking for which part is the actual machining part. I'll click on any face on my part and you can see now I have the one that I have labeled single part. Because this is a SOLIDWORKS assembly, I most likely made copies of that same part in this case, the second one over here. So rather than going around and clicking on them, I can just click on Add All Instances. So every copy of the part present in this assembly can now be added here. This isn't just a quick way to get all the solids on screen. It also represents a simple part, a single part that I can program against, and then it carries all of that over to the copies of that part. But like I said earlier, this is basically still CAMWorks. The only difference here is now that we have multiple parts, we have to control it as part of an assembly. But we still have the ability to do a extract machinable features. And in doing so, we can see the feature manager under the part manager shows all the features on the part that it has found for me. So these are the features found for the individual part, but that gets copied over to all the instances of the part as well. If we take a look at the assembly setup, we can see that I have found all these features on that part. Now, if I had multiple versions of that same part, all facing the same direction, then we would see multiple face features and multiple regular pockets for all the instances of that part. I only have one instance here, and that's why it only shows the one. 
If you take a look at the part though, I want to do some operations on the back side of this part here. I could actually program that inside of assembly mode, or I can take advantage of another functionality of assembly mode, and the fact that we are still inside of an associative software. It knows that this part in this assembly actually was its own part and probably programmed in part mode. So another thing you can do in assembly mode is actually import the, the cam data from the previous part. So if I right click on that instance there, I can go to import part data. And what it does is it brings up this import part data window, which allows me to delete the existing data, so whatever I just found, and import it from the part file. So if I do that now, we can see that it gets rid of what was previously found. In this case, it's exactly the same features, but on the part mode version of this part, I actually added a face feature to the back side. So this is where assembly mode can differ from part mode. In part mode, we can program all sides of the part and then add those out, post those out under different offsets. Here, in assembly mode, there's only one machining direction. So if we take a look at our setup, it only found the features on the first part and only added the face feature to the second part, mainly because those can only be accessible from that one machining direction. So one of the benefits of programming in part mode and then bringing that part into assembly mode is we can program the part for any instance that part might be programmed in, but once we bring it into assembly, it will only output code for the appropriate side. In this case, all the features on side one on part one, all the features and operations for side two on part two, the one with the backside facing upwards. So this gives you the ability to program individual parts in part mode with all the features and all the operations, however they should be done. And then when you bring them in assembly mode, you can then uh, add your work holding and orient and set up your parts the way they'll sit on the machine and then allow assembly mode to recognize which features and which operations would be appropriate to run in this particular setup. Lastly, if we jump to the operations window, and if I just generate these operations, if we run some of these operations, for instance, if I run the part perimeter finishing operation on part one, this operation will gouge my vise. So what I can do in assembly mode is I can give it information as to what actual fixtures I'm using. So if I go into my setup definition, fixtures, I'll tell it that basically the vise is something to gouge check against, and I'll tell it to avoid all. Once I add that to the definition, it recalculates, and now what we'll see is if I go back to that operation, it actually avoids gouging the vise. It'll trim the toolpath to avoid gouging of that vise. So essentially, Assembly mode is the same as your standard CamWorks functionality. It's just acting on a SolidWorks assembly, which gives us a little extra functionality with respect to programming the part, especially when we have unique work holding, or in this case, when we're trying to run production and we have multiple parts, multiple orientations. You can streamline a lot of the programming of your parts in this assembly mode by pre-programming programming them in part mode and importing that data. So the overall workflow ends up being the same. What you're doing is, again, you're just adding something on top of the work you've done to further refine that programming. Any questions on this or anything else, give us a call at the phone number found on our website, and stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.